Welcome, I'm the Deadwood Jedi and this is another Raid Shadow Legends video. Uh, this is a kind of a fun video uh, for myself actually, uh, not something I usually do, but I decided to take the same exact gear, put it on five different champions moving from one to the other, and compare their damage as a stun target for the budget unkillable. Um, I was just using Rugnor in a video I just did, and I thought that was a really cool little uh, showcase of how he can be used especially with the new skill priorities but there's a bunch of other champions i felt that were viable for this kind of a role void champions that could do good damage or bring solid debuffs to the table and i figured why not showcase what we can do with them all so that's what i did um now in order to do that i used the same four other champions next to them as i did in the ragnar video I had bellinor one to help lower the crit rate just to make gearing a little bit easier uh two uh we also brought in a cult brawler so we could have some poisons up on the table there um and then we also brought in man eater and painkeeper obviously and those four haven't changed and i'm actually going to show you some of the results from the ragnar video as well just so you can get a good comparison in this one but we're going to bring four other champions to the table. They're all Void champions. And those are the ones I feel are the easiest to gear out. Uh, I should say to make a budget and killable team work for your account. Because with a Void champion taking the stun, that means you just have to make sure that none of your DPS champions are weak affinity. Which you don't really want them to be anyway. So you can switch them out. So at most you need, or at the lowest, you need three champions to be able to switch out for different affinities and that can make this team work really nicely for you because you never have to switch out your stun champion. That's the benefit of the Void. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you guys all those champions. We'll go start with Rugnor and work our way through, uh, culminating with who I think is actually going to be the best for this, and this should be a definitive example of why. Um, now, one thing I do want to let you know, I have a game on video down below. That's going to detail all the gear that is on. So right now I'm just showing you all the gear. I'll show you the total stats, but if you want to see the individual pieces, you'll want to check out that game on video. Some people will get really interested in how I gear out those champions. That'll be a good way to see that for uh, for the stun target here. And so without further ado, let's uh, look at Rugnor. So I started this whole idea and I began with Rugnor. And I did that video not too long ago. You guys can check that out. Um, I'll have that linked at the end of this video. So you can just click on that thumbnail. Um, but you can see these are the this is the gear I have on Rugnor. And I'm putting that gear on every single one of my stun champions. All of them. You can see the stats here. He's got about 5,500 attack, which is really good. Um, he's got 90% crit rate, which is more than enough with Bellinor's aura. He's got the 271 crit damage. Um, he's doing everything that we want. He's got the accuracy and everything. And you can see here, as he goes through this, the kind of damage that he can do. I mean, big, big hit. This is why Rugner is so good. And because everything gets cooled down from him taking damage... Um, and the timing of everything, which if you want to use Ragnar, you definitely have to go in the uh, watch that video to make sure that you get the timing right, because that leech debuff can be a real big problem if you don't do it right. But because of that, he's able to put up decreased defense and weaken every single turn and do hits like that for 160k, 200k, um, just crazy, crazy numbers. Now, as with all of these champions, I'm having the same gear on them. This is very high quality gear. I would not expect anybody to get to these numbers. Is this the best gear in the world? No, but it's pretty high up there. And I'm also using Bellinor, so I'm decreasing the crit rate needed. We're the slow boy, so we don't even need a lot of speed. All of these things help to allow us to really push the damage, push the attack, push the crit damage, so that we're getting the most out of these champions. But I wanted to do that. I wanted to show you guys what the potential is and what the full outcome can be from this. Um, and so I feel like this is the best way to go about doing that, giving you a full highlight of all these champions, what they can do. And we got five of them we're going to be going through today. So this is Ragnar. You can see, I mean, he just smacks really, really hard, um, which is just awesome to watch and awesome to have on your squad. I love watching a 250,000 damage hit for a slow boy in the budget unkillable, that's crazy numbers. And you can see here the total number that he had, about 7 million damage. Yeah, I know I'm my, there's a background image of myself there. This is directly from that video. Um, but he did crazy, crazy damage with that. 7 million is just an insane amount of damage, I think, for your slow boy. He's not putting up poisons. He's just making everybody else hit harder. Now, like I said, you might not get those specific numbers, but you're still going to be doing pretty good, I think. So... Definitely something you're going to want to keep in mind as you move forward with this. Um, so let's look at the uh, next champion here. Uh, I believe this should be 
Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we're going to look at Exemplar. Okay, this is Exemplar. Where Ragnar is one of my favorites. Exemplar is one of those ones where you use it if you have her. You can see this have the same kind of damage going on, 5300 attack. It's a little bit less, but generally, it's all about the same. Um, and, you know, it's the same exact gear. So that's why. The only differences are, of course, the accessories that we're using. And she has a little lower base stat, so we're having to bump those up. Here you can see... We're trying to, I'm trying to show you that we have Giant Slayer on her, and that makes a world of difference damage-wise. But her A2 has a 3 attack skill, or A1 has a 3 attack skill, assuming that we can get the uh, that weaken up and it's critical. Um, those are going to allow us to use Giant Slayer for every single hit, and we're just going to disable that A3. That's what I'm going to show you guys here in a second. And because of that, we're going to be able to put up pretty good damage. Now, she only puts up the weakened debuff. You have to get the decreased defense from somewhere. And here you can see I'm in the skill prioritization taking off that A3 skill. We're not going to use it. We're just going to use her A2 and her A1. That's going to allow us to use Giant Slayer to great effect here. You get a lot of damage out of that. Uh, as you should be able to see right here, there goes a hit. Look at that. Three hits, all 40, 45,000 damage. Um, that's a big hit. There's 150,000 or so once you add it all up. Um, not to mention the multiple procs of Giant Slayer makes that much, much la larger, actually. Um, but yeah, she's just phenomenal in this. Uh, way better than I would have thought. Um, now, I'm not saying she's the go-to choice. You can see there she did about 90k. Um, there are plenty of options for this. She's probably not the best option, but she's a Void Champion, which means you just have to change your DPSs around. She does bring a weakened debuff, so you can pair her with someone that just does decreased defense, like maybe a Saito, if you'd like to. Um, and she's going to be very, very effective. And those hits are pretty good. I mean, 40k a bunch of times. I'm okay with that, right? Um, but she's got a, a, you know, three triple hit or two triple hit attacks that are each going to uh, proc that Giant Slayer. And that kind of damage uh, can have a major impact on what you're doing. You can see Ragnar did about 7 million. Uh, he's pretty much the cream of the crop here. Right, um, she's gonna be doing a lot of damage. Not quite that, but the Giant Slayer makes up for a lot of that kind of damage. Now she doesn't have the same utility Ragnar does. Ragnar brings decreased defense and weaken. She only brings weaken that limits her utility uh, for the budget unkillable. But there's a lot of champions out there that do one or the other. Brings decreased defense or brings weaken. Very few that do both. Um, and so she becomes a very viable option filling that other half of that role because we can makes all your damage do more um, And there you go. You can see she did 5.9 million um, Not quite Ragnar, but not that far off uh, only basically a million left less um, And that's basically the difference in the damage of the comps as well as you can see um, But still pretty solid I would say overall and uh, definitely a champion I would look at in the stun target now the next one is someone uh, who we used to love, and now it's very difficult to get behind. So why Firstborn? You can see her attacks very low, 4,800. I say very low, relatively low compared to the rest of them. Um, and uh, I had to mess around with as much stuff as I could to get her to work. She has an incredibly high defense for an attack champion, over 1,000 as a base. Um, her base attack is rather low uh, at only 1,300. It's not low, but relatively it is. Also, her A2... Places decreased attack. We don't need that. It's an unkillable comp. Her A1 is decreased defense. Her A3 is weakened. Um, they remade her kit. It makes her very useful for a lot of things because she brings a ton of different debuffs. But it does make her worse for clan boss. She just does not do as much damage as she used to. Which, in all honesty, is a little bit unfortunate. Um, but you can see, putting her in, what you want to do is just eliminate that A2. We don't need it. And it doesn't do the kind of damage it used to. So we'll take away that decreased Decreased attack is not necessary. We really only need her to use two skills, the decreased defense skill and the weakened debuff. Um, she's going to be reliable for the weakened. She's not going to be reliable for the decreased defense percentage chance. So there you go. You see that weakened goes 140,000, 44,000. It's pretty significant, I would say, um, just as damage goes. I think that we can be safe to say that. Um, and then here we should be able to see her use her decreased defense skill, her A1, I believe. So we'll check that out here, see what kind of damage it does. 114,000. So, you know, you build her up with good crit damage, good attack. She will do significant damage for you. She's going to be better in a traditional comp. She has a very high base defense, which makes her easier to stay alive and get to, like, a decent defensive level. Um, and her, you know, her debuff repertoire 
is a little bit wider, right? We get a decreased defense and decreased attack, and we can we get all three of those in one. Um, it allows you to go without, it allows you to use her as your decreased attack champion, um, for example. You can use her instead of, say, like a Tayrell. Um, and she can do significant damage for you if you build her right. Um, it's just going to be a little bit more difficult. For an unkillable team like this, there are, simply are better options, um, which we've already named, and we have a couple more that I'm going to throw out there for you guys as well. But it is nice to be able to have a decreased defense champion and weakened champion there, and she does both. So I wouldn't use her as my primary, probably like a secondary decreased defense champion. The weakened's pretty guaranteed, though. Um, but there you go. You can see it did 4.8 million. Definitely the weakest so far, um, and I think that's kind of to be expected there. She's just not a super strong damage dealer anymore, which is unfortunate, uh, but she still has a place in this game, as her kit's still pretty unique, bringing both decreased defense, weaken, and decreased attack. Uh, definitely definitely like that champion. Now, the next one we're going to be looking at here is uh, Rowan. Rowan is, I think, the best. Out of all the stun targets, I think Rowan's the best. Now... An interesting thing here, I built her out. Now you're going to see she has a triple attack on her A2 and a four attack with poisons on her A4. Those are the skills we're prioritizing. One thing I want you to notice, uh, I we might have zoomed through it pretty quick. I only have 146 accuracy on her. This is Ultra Nightmare. That means her poisons aren't going to land consistently. I did this for a specific reason. I wanted to see what her damage was like without the poisons now we're not going to get a perfect picture of that obviously because some are just going to land there's always a chance right but i think this should be give us a better chance just to see the raw damage what uh how it equates to other people now you can see that's a four hitter thirty-five thousand damage per hit thereabouts it's pretty good not to mention the fact that we have giant slayer on that as well so each of those has a chance of proccing giant slayer that makes a huge huge difference for her damage um, and that's the triple hitter, 30,000 plus for each of those. So we're talking 120, 90,000. This is the kind of damage we're doing. If you consider the fact that she's also going to give you four poisons every cycle, that's pretty great. Uh, it's pretty great. Now, you can't use her on, our, on auto. If you use her on auto, she'll use her A1, which is the heal reduction. We don't want that. Absolutely don't want that. Um, that's why we have to do the skill priority, prioritizing her A3 and her A2 skill. Um, and because you only take two skills per cycle on this before it gets reset, she'll never use her A1. And that's kind of how this one works. Crazy kind of damage she can do. And here you can see the total potential, 7 million damage, the same as Rugnor. Now, I'm not saying she's actually going to do the same damage as Rugnor. I'm sure some of that came from a few stray poisons that she ended up landing, even though I tried not to give her the accuracy to do so. But she's bonkers, guys. Uh, 7 million damage is a lot. A lot. Um, and then, very last, is Harking Greatblade. Um, and so you got we got 5,300 attack on her. Pretty solid, I think. Good crit damage. Uh, accuracy is there. She brings a weakened debuff, much like, uh, much like uh, Exemplar does. Um, and so she's not the perfect debuff champion for this role. But this is the kind of person you put in there when you just want damage. You're not worried about debuff so much. Um, you have that from your other champions. Pairs well with like a Draco, for example, type of thing, or a Fane or whatnot. She's really good, though. Um, she does have good multipliers on her skills. So it's just about making them work. Now, with her skills, they're all single target hits. So we're not going to use Giant Slayer on her. We are going to use War Master. And I think that's really one of the biggest differences uh, in the total damage that we do here. But watch these hits. They are not small hits. They're not Ragnar big, but they're not small hits that she does here. Um, and it's I think it's pretty darn impressive. There you go. 100,000. Not too shabby, right? Uh, we can deal with that. Um, we didn't have decreased defense or weak enough for that hit, though. So keep that in mind. That makes a big difference to the damage we do. In fact, we only have weak enough right now. And we'll see how this does. There we go. We're going to get the decreased defense up as well. And here goes Harkin. I think she's going to take a turn here. Boom. Double hit, 90k each. That's big damage. That is pretty close to Ragnar damage there. About 80, that's what, 180,000? Uh, very, very nice. She has a chance for an extra hit on her A1 skill, I believe it is. Um, she can do some work for you guys. Look at that. Two hits, 74, 75,000, no weaken up. That, you can see the difference of having a weakened debuff up makes. 
uh, damage wise. Um, and you can even just have her do her A1 if that's what you wanted her to do. Um, her other skills do hit pretty darn hard though, so I'm not sure if that's necessarily what, the way you want to go about it. But the idea though here is for your stun target, that's almost 200,000 hits. It's crazy. For your stun target, you want them void, you want them to be able to hit hard. You know, pretty high de high HP, I should say, and really low defense. Harkin fits that mold, fits that mold really well. We don't always have a wide selection of champions we can choose for this role. She's an excellent option for it. So if you have her, that might be a consideration to use. And you can see we did just about 6 million damage, almost the same, pretty much the same as Exemplar. Um, and she was hitting much harder, but you can see that's the difference between the Giant Slayer and War Master Prox. Giant Slayer is very, very useful. Um, she did a little bit more than Exemplar, so I would probably give her the edge as far as picking a champion to choose. But you can see all these champions are really good options here. So I thought that was a pretty interesting little uh, display of what these champions can do. You can see the difference isn't ginormous between any of them. They all hit pretty hard, but the difference between doing a three key and a two key can only be one million sometimes, so it can have a major impact. Um, we're talking about Rugnor and Rowan, easily the two best options for this type of a team. I mean, they just did crazy amounts of damage, and I think it's pretty easy to say Rowan is probably the best stun target in this game for the budget and killable. I mean, we took off the accuracy, so she wasn't even putting up poisons, and she still did just about the same amount of damage as Rugnor did. Um, so, I mean, I, even accounting for any random poisons that might have landed, she was very, very effective. So that's one of the reasons why I recommend her so much for this. Rugnor, of course, is a beast. But even looking at champions like Exemplar, who nobody uses anywhere, um, looking at champions like Harkin Greatblade, who isn't really used all that often either, and even Suwai, who I probably would recommend not using, or I, I wouldn't strongly recommend, I would... I would advise to look elsewhere if you can use one of these other champions but even she was a very good option for this i thought um bring some good debuffs along with her kit so these are some interesting champions i thought they all did pretty well um obviously the gear is king and that's why we were able to do so much damage with all of them and if you don't have that kind of gear that's another reason why champions like rugnor champions like uh rowan are so good because they bring the debuffs on top of it so even if you're not gearing them out completely they're going to make your other champions hit harder or the poisons that Rowan's going to put on are going to be very effective anyway so those are the champions i'd recommend thank you guys for checking this out hit that game on video if you're interested in seeing the 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 uh <laughs> intricate layers of the gear that we had on them hit the like subscribe please and uh yeah until next we meet on the deadwood jedi